Welcome to the Pastor Tyra Show. I'm Pastor Tyra and today we launch. We launch into new mindset, we launch into new territory, we launch into new relationships. We're about to launch. Are you ready? Come on, let's go on this journey. So today we are continuing in our series in talking about the celebrations and the observations that are found in the Bible. And last month we sat with Minister Troy Crafton and we talked about Lent and what that meant and being in this 40 day process from one period to the next. And we've really been looking at this and we've been concentrating on this and we've been really studying this. And so as we're coming through and as we're coming through the month, we are also looking at what happens within this 40 day period. And one of those things that happen is Passover. <laughs> and Passover is important because it has significance for all of us who are followers and believers of the principles that God has sent for us to follow and to set our lives upon. So, Minister Crafton is back with us today and we are going to talk about Passover and the significance of it. And so I'm going to bring him on into this conversation so that we can dig in and we can just start and we can just go ahead and have this conversation. So welcome Minister Crafton again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited about this conversation that we're about to have about Passover. Passover. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But for anyone who wasn't here last time, just reintroduce yourself. Tell them who you are and where you come from and what you're doing here. Not a problem. <laughs> Not a problem. Well, once again, praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. So my name is Troy, as she said, Minister Troy Crafton. Um, and I'm here with my sister, my friend, yes. uh, my confidant. She is the <laughs> epitome of the scripture that Paul said, I have become all things to all men that I may win some. That's who this young lady is here. Mm. She is my sister. She is my friend. She is a confidant. She has everything that I have needed so many times. And I'm grateful to be in this spot with her. Um, I am happy to be here to share with you all again. Yes. Uh, last time we were here, as she stated, we were talking about Lent. Yes. And prayerfully, yes. uh, after you have watched the show, you have pre uh, prepared yourself for Lent that at that time started that night. That's that, right. That, that, that night. night, right. Uh, you got to watch the other one for you to know exactly what that is. Yes. But prayerfully, you have followed uh, some of the instructions that has happened. Uh, we stated to write some stuff out. Mm -hmm. Assign your your sacrifice. Yes. Assign yeah. your prayers. Mm -hmm. Assign your praise. You should be seeing some of the manifestations of your fasting yes. uh, from being in Lent. Mm -hmm. But I am happy to be here. Yes. We're going to be talking about Passover. Yes. Passover is very significant in you being in the way, in you mm -hmm. being in... Uh, you know, one who is following the teachings and the, uh, uh, the doings of our Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Yes, yes. And that's true because, and, and you're right, because we are still in, in this 40-day season, mm -hmm. right, um, of, of Lent and where, it, you know, as we talked about, Christ went into the wilderness, right, right. and he was in the wilderness for, this, for the 40 days, and he was tempted right. the entire time, right. but he didn't fall to the temptation. No the entire time, right? So the whole time he was in the wilderness, he was in, what do we call it? The uncultivated, uncultivated place. place, yes. And so, and we are right now in this time, in this season, mm -hmm. right? Of being in an uncultivated place, but we are in this place where we are really focusing on our relationship and building up our spiritual selves. Right. Right, so that we can receive what he has, and even in that, we need to hear what God is saying, we need to see what God is doing, right? And we need to receive mm -hmm. all that he has for us to take us what 
to that next, next place, right? To that next level, right? Mm -hmm. And so even in that, even while those things were going on, there were still other things that were happening. And that's why we're talking about mm -hmm. Passover because it is such a significant time. It's mm -hmm. such a significant time because even Christ and his family celebrated they the Passover the every year. Every year. Every year they went where they go? To the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. They went every year. every year. They traveled and they went and they celebrated the feast, right? Actually, let's back up. They went and celebrated Passover. Why? Mm -hmm. So why is it so significant? Why is it so important that Passover is celebrated and remembered by the people? Well, it's it's remember it's it should be celebrated because as the scripture teaches us, mm -hmm. it is the Lord's feast. Mm. It has nothing to do with uh, being a Jew. <laughs> it has nothing to do with it doesn't? being Are you not sure? at all. It has to do. It has nothing to do with being. You know, everybody talks about Gentiles and okay. you know and everything like that. But it has to do with what the Most High God has set into place for them who are chosen. Right. Who were you to say that you weren't chosen? Why would you put yourself in a category to not be chosen? Because I'm not Jewish. So this is the Old Testament, and this was only for the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. He only saved the Jewish people. Come mm -hmm. on. That's what the Bible says. That's what's there. That It was only for them. It wasn't for anybody else. It was for when the chosen. Passover happened, mm -hmm. right? So, what is the significance? So, the Passover is when what? They were they were in the land, and he was coming, and he was going to smite the firstborn, right, in every house, right? right? So he was coming to kill the firstborn, and what did, what did he? What was the instruction? The instruction was to slay the lamb, mm -hmm. right? Take the blood from the young lamb, mm -hmm. the young lamb, right, and what? Put it on the doorpost. On the doorpost. You put it on the top, and you put it on the sides. Well, let's talk about where they were. Okay, let's talk so about the where children, they were. The children yes. of Israel were uh -huh. in a place to where torment was all over their lives. Mm. The children of Israel were in a place to where they were beaten, they were scorned, um, they weren't living the best life that the Most High would have had for them to live. Why? Well, so why so, why were they in this place and not living the best? I mean, we're the chosen people. He got us out of Egypt, right? He got mm -hmm. us to this place. So why are we not living our best life? If we are the chosen, we're the chosen. So why, why are we living in this time where we're not getting the best if we are his chosen people. Isn't that what we say today? Like, mm -hmm. if I, I'm following Christ. I'm doing what Christ tells me to do. I'm being obedient to his word. And So why is it so hard, right? We even deal with that today. Why is my life so hard? Why do I not have the riches and, and, and the money and the this and the that? Like, why? Why is it so hard? Isn't it the same thing that the, that the children of Israel were saying back then? Even in this time? Well, there's also an obedience factor. Okay. There has to be there has to be some type of obedience to what he has called for you to do. Right. So in this time the children of Israel were in Egypt. They were in captivity, um, unfortunately. Now that that type of thing happens because of their disobedience. That's true. Yep. Now the children of Israel were led into captivity several times, but we're at a place to where at this point they were in Egypt and it was time for them to be brought out. That's yeah. where Moses comes into play. He tells Moses, tell them I am that I am have mm. sent him. Yes. Now, yes. now when he goes to them to deliver them, he sends, they, they ex actually experience several plagues. Mm -hmm. Now the thing, that's, yes. the thing that's significant to me before this last plague came, um, that, const that um, constituted Passover that gave the significance of Passover is that in, 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 in the most high heart in Pharaoh's heart um, there were you'll see to where 
the other plagues that came about to where Moses was following God's instruction and um, the other sorcerers that were there thought that Moses wasn't Moses' God wasn't any better than the sorcerers that were there. Mm, now the problem is that I've that I've uh, noticed in this scripture mm -hmm. is that I've seen it in my life and I've had conversations with other people to where isn't it funny how people will think that they're on the same level as God. They could think that they could they do, do the same thing yep, that God do. does, so your God must not matter. Right. So God God sets that up so much to where let me show you who I really am. Let me show you who I this am. This is something mm -hmm. that nobody else can do. Mm -hmm. This is something that nobody else will ever do. Right. Follow my instructions. Take the lamb. Take the young lamb. Mm -hmm. Slaughter the young lamb. Mm -hmm. So that you could have the blood of that sacrifice. Right. Dip it in the hyssop. Mm -hmm. After you do that, smear it on the doorpost. Mm -hmm. So that when I come around. When I come around. I'll send the death angel. To kill the firstborn of everything. Right. He killed the firstborn sons. Mm -hmm. He killed the firstborn of even the animals. The animals. That's right. That's he right. said, when I do my thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. It shall be known forever. That's right. Now, once the, the, the significance of the blood being over the door post, door post, it let the death angel know who we were. Who we were. Who we were. We, behind the door. Behind the door. Who we are behind the door. We have a certain door. identity yes. Yes. that could never be touched mm -mm. because we are followers of him. That's right. We have a certain identity that will never, when we are walking in it, mm -hmm. that will never be misconstrued with anything or anybody. That's right. It can't be confused. It cannot it can't be, be confused. And if you want to see where we're coming from, we are in Exodus. We are in Exodus chapter 13, 12. chapter 12, and so yeah, we go, it goes into 13, but we're, so we are in Exodus, and we, like, that's where the whole story of this comes to play, and you see how the children of Israel, they are, they come out of Egypt, and what happens, and it is their process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? It is their process. Just like we just said that we go through right. a process, right. right? And it's when we accept the blood mm -hmm. be from behind the door, but you got to put the blood on the outside of the it door. It has to be applied. It has to be. Can you say that again? It has to it be has applied. It has to be applied. It has to be <laughs> applied. Listen, yes. Leviticus 3 teaches us that in all of our dwellings, in all of everywhere everywhere that we go, everything that we do in life, we are neither to eat the fat nor to eat the blood. Mm. The blood was always meant to be applied. Mm. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. All that's all to it. Just apply the blood. Apply the blood. Mm. Wow. Apply the blood. So we're going to stop right there okay. and we're going to go to a commercial break and on the other side, we're going to continue this conversation about Passover and what it means. We'll be right back. You can join us virtually or at the church located at 458 East Rittenhouse Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're back and we were talking about applying the blood. And so we're talking about applying the blood in the Old Testament, but this all has significance and it all has impact on us even in the New Testament. There is correlation between the then and the then and, and our then. now, right? So we're going to bring Minister Crafton back in. And so the the then, the then. of the Exodus, right? The Old uh -huh. Of the Old Testament. And then the then of, of the, New the New Testament of Christ, right? 
being the lamb and providing the blood and the application mm. that we were talking about before we went to the break how do we apply that how is that significant to us because as you said earlier like it was just for the chosen but the chosen is said it's just the Jewish people right it's not us it's not us Gentiles it's not us followers of Christ right because we're not Jewish so how does this apply to mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. that's what they try to say that it's not it's not for everybody mm. it's only for a certain sect not understanding what it really is like we said it's the Lord's feast this is this is of the Lord Passover is what the Lord instituted yes. now that foundation is absolutely amazing the Messiah coming, Jesus the Christ coming to be that ultimate sacrifice to show forth the application before we're able to do it yes. was the even better part. Mm -hmm. So that's the then, mm -hmm. and that's the then. Mm -hmm. Now the now. Yes, the What now. do we do? One word, assimilation. Assimilation? Assimilation. Assimilation means to take on to oneself. Okay. Okay. It means to okay. it means to gather everything about it, to learn everything about it, and take it on to yourself and apply. Apply. Once again, apply. It's mm -hmm. meant to be applied. Mm -hmm. You pl apply it to yourself, and you take on everything about what the sacrifice was, everything that the sacrifice did. His blood was shed for the remission of our sins. Right, right. Apply that to our life so that we could get away from sin. We can be cleansed from sin. Now we are doing what the scripture teaches and how the scripture teaches us to be transformed mm. by the renewing of our mind. Right. The transformation of our mind comes when we apply the blood. Mm -hmm. The cleanliness of our life comes when we apply the when we apply the blood. Mm -hmm. But minister, come on. This is 2021. Okay. Come on. Okay. Do you know how difficult it is to live today? We are not back there where there wasn't technology and information everywhere. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't, you know, all this crime and all these trials and temptations. And, you know, it's just everything is right at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not easy living this life. And you want me to apply what they did then to my life today? Absolutely. Come on. Come Absolutely. No. Psalms, Psalms, it's recorded in Psalms, I believe it's 119. Wherewithal shall a man cleanse his ways and take heed, take heed to the word of God. Once you take heed to the word of God and apply it to your life mm -hmm. and you live in it and you ask the Most High to help you to live in it, he will. There's no temptation known to man that the Messiah has not been tempted with. None. So with him being tempted of everything, mm -hmm. him being tempted of the devil himself and had the strength through fasting. Now we talked about Lent. We talked about it. Through fasting and prayer, mm -hmm. there's no temptation that you do not have the power to overcome once you've applied the blood. Oh, oh, wait. So I can't do it by myself? I there's can't do it without... Mm -mm. Christ, I can't. Oh, so I don't have the power in myself. I can't just do this. There are some things that you can do with, by by yourself, uh -huh, uh -huh. but it will never be as effective as when you allow Him to lead you and guide you. Listen, I, into I'm, all truth. Into all truth. <laughs> now, let me tell you about a dream. I'm I'm not going to try to go over your time. We, we mess up sometimes. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> I had a dream one time that um, I was trying to fight and I could not fight. Mm -hmm. But I saw a hand come down, mm -hmm. and I stepped inside of the hand. The hand punched a wall. Mm -hmm. Now I said, "Well, what does that? What does that mean? Right. Right. What is that? I don't. I really don't understand it." Mm -hmm. In the dream, he said, "If the revelation of the dream was, if you live in me, if you let me make the impact, I'll leave you with the imprint." I'll leave you with the effects of 
what I could do for you, mm. but you have to let me do it for you. Because you're in. You have to be in his head. In. That comes from you changing your, like, wherewithal shall a man cleanse his way? By learning the word and, and taking heed to the word. By applying the blood, by accepting the blood, yes. by accepting him right. as the Messiah, as the Savior of the world, and then applying what he teaches to our lives. That's right. If we do that, he'll do everything we need, and he'll leave us with the effects of what he can do. Because here's the other thing, and, and honestly, this literally just came to me because, so, because you said we have to accept it, right? Mm -hmm. We have to believe first, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that the whole thing about coming to salvation, and we have to believe, accept, confess, uh -huh. right? receive and then we go in it then we go to work then we go to work right, right? so and that's, that's when we start but we first have to believe it so if they didn't believe <laughs> that god was going to pass over their doors they wouldn't apply the blood in the first place up. right right if they didn't believe first that applying the blood was going to cover them right they wouldn't have went to work and applied mm -hmm. and then saw that it worked right. when they woke up in the morning because mm -hmm. they went to sleep and they woke up in the morning and they were still there. They woke up, heard the cries of everybody else, the effects of everything that happened with everybody else, right. but they were still intact. But they were still Why intact. were they still intact? Because they, they applied. applied the blood. Because they applied. And that's what we need to do. We have to apply the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why he came. That's why. This is why he came. And even, even Jesus and his family, they even celebrated and remembered mm -hmm. the Passover because why? He wouldn't have been here. <laughs> and he made it an even greater institute when he talked to the disciples and he he gave them the instructions of here this is my body this is my body mm -hmm. so we're going to sacrifice the, this is the blood yes yes that, and that's what he said like even before he went he knew what he was about to do right which is why uh oh we back into it the 40 days right. he was in the wilderness for the preparation for the 40 days because he knew what was about to happen but then he sat and we that we're going into our next point mm -hmm. but then he sat with the disciples and he said listen this is what you must remember mm -hmm. and you must always what apply right. the blood he gave them the wine he said this this is my blood that is shed for you. Mm -hmm. Drink ye. Apply it. Mm -hmm. You can't. Don't just put it on you because you can wipe it off of you. <laughs> but when you take it in. Take it in. You got to take it in. You got to take it in. Mm -hmm. Like it can't be something that you wash on and wash. It's got to become a part of you. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, you were inside and in the imprint. You were in his hand. And so like it is so important that we really understand and realize what the significance of mm -hmm. Passover is and why we should as followers of Christ remember remember recognize observe what he did right what the children did what the exodus meant what the application means what to the, the door. What the application means. Right. And even the application to the doorpost, you're behind, you're protected. Protected. You're protected behind the door. That's why he says, I come to the door and I knock. Mm -hmm. You can open it. Because it's me. Because it's me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> you can open the door, it's me. And my blood is applied, applied to the door, so you can you can open mm -hmm. at this knock, cause mm -hmm. it's not the death angel knock. It's not the death angel knock. It's the grace knock. It's the grace. It's the mercy knock. knock. Yeah. It's the life knock. Talking. <laughs> Talking. That's the knock yes. that you're hearing. Yes. And you want to open the door 
and receive him. He's at the door knocking, asking, can I come in? Mm-hmm. Can, can I come in? And that is the be- and that is one of the best things that has happened to my life. I, w- I want you to understand. Mm-hmm. I want you, I want you to understand. <laughs> not, I haven't really talked. To, I want you to understand that that is one of the best things that has happened in my life. The Most High doesn't promise that it will be easy. Mm-hmm. I want you to understand that once you yes. accept Him, He never promises easy, but He promises victory. He does. That's what he does. He yes. promises victory. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, right. if you are in him, in him, and he's in you, not you just being in him, but him being in you, mm-hmm. have you applied the blood? Applied the blood. Have you taken it in? Have you received all that he has for us to receive? Mm. The Passover is so important and it is so important that we remember, we remember and we recognize year after year, generation after After generation. generation, we have to teach, we have to show, and we have to have understanding of what the significance is not Mm -hmm. just for them but for us and for those who come after us right we cannot stop teaching we cannot stop the 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 principles we cannot stop the application we can't we have to continue on in the word you have to and that's what the scripture the scripture teaches us Several times. Several. You'll see it several times. These things shall you do throughout all your generations. Exactly. It's just not the grandfather and then a mother and one child. No. Mm -mm. It's for this child, this child, the next next generation, the next generation, every generation that is to come. Every generation that is to come. Throughout all your generations, these things shall be a memorial as to what I have done for your fathers. Yes. For your forefathers, for everybody that was inside of that. Because lineage. it's a continuation mm-hmm. of the promise. It's a covenant. It's a it's a covenant. And we're gonna stop right here. I oh minister, I thank you so much. This conversation was phenomenal. And we are going to continue in our conversation because there's more to this. There's even more to this. Besides just the Passover. There are things that come with that. And so I thank you for joining us on today in this conversation. And we look forward to seeing you next week on the Pastor Chira Show. God bless you. And we'll see you next week.